Welcome back to Power and Politics. As we've been showing you, the Queen is here in the country's capital today. Right now, she's at Rideau Hall with the Prime Minister and a very fancy garden party. Meantime, speculation continues about who will be her representative once Governor General Mikhail Jean's term ends later this summer. Mikhail Jean right now is in China, by the way. And from civil society to civil liberties, more calls today for answers about how police handle protesters at the G20 summit in Toronto. What does it say about the state of Canadian democracy? We've got three upstanding Canadians on the pre-Canada Day power panel today. From Toronto, Scott Reed of Festchuck Reed. And Scott, uh, I know you do um, point of order with your counterpart, Jamie Watt. He's at the garden party right now, buddy. You didn't even get an invitation. Get out. Absolutely. Oh, this is... This is this is the outrage of a conservative government. <laughs> you can, you can, he's eating bonbons while you're on television. In the meantime, here in Ottawa, David Aiken of Sun Media, no invitation. Bruce Anderson of National Public Relations and Harris Decima, such a kind guy. I bet he got one, but he's rather be here. I just, I'm, I'll live within my necessary illusion on that. Uh, let me start, uh, Scott, the politics of the monarchy. The Queen is here. There's lots of... Um, polls out the talk about, you know, whether Canadians still want a monarch or, or whether we need a monarchy. I mean, is it time, 143 years, to, to seriously raise the question about if Canada should have a different system other than the monarchy? Well, I, you can ask a question. I'll give you my answer. No. Um, you know, it ain't broke. Don't fix it. I think there's tremendous value in the monarchy, to be honest with you. I think that, you know, it's a reminder of the uh, grand British tradition, the parliamentary tradition that's, uh, that's a founding element of, uh, of our country. Uh, it, you know, when we talk about peace, order, and good government, we talk about stability in government, these values that help to define us as a country and as a people, a lot of that is rooted in the monarchy and in that system. And, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, I guess the Prince Edward County is coming out of me, but I, I have little time for people to say, let's, uh, let's dump these institutions. I think actually we should be, you know, hanging on to these institutions, revitalizing them to be sure, but hanging on to these institutions rather than overthrowing them because these symbols are terribly important. They remind us of our past, and that helps us uh, guide our way into the future. Boy, right off the monarchist script, Prince Edward County, the home of all those loyalists that paddled on over and... Uh, Damn good, straight. Good, good, good UEL on. right after my you, name. You no, know, I like that. Uh, Bruce, you know, what's interesting is here we're very careful about it. You know, the Queen is here right now and people are feeling a little sensitive about the subject. But, you know, in England, they talk about this a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a more robust debate. It's almost mm -hmm. a freer debate to talk about the relevance of the monarchy in England than it is here in Canada. Yeah, I believe that. And, and as a pollster, I always feel like a little bit the skunk at the proverbial garden party. Every time a member of the royal family comes right. and visits, I seem to be on a TV show and people yeah. say, do, do Canadians really care about the Queen and the royal family? Well, the polls come out, and, and they, by the way, they never play well in favor of the monarchy. Really. No, they don't. And I think really what the, the issue is that the, 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 the monarchy has become, for most people, inoffensive but uninspiring as an institution. And I think Scott's got an argument that if we're going to keep it, we should do something to make it a little bit more inspiring for people. We're, we're, we've got a huge generation gulf that's uh, been created where younger generations of Canadians really don't understand the kind of historical importance of it, the role that it played in the history of our country. And without that, um, I think we're headed for a situation where inoffensive but uninspiring turns into a little bit more of why do we keep doing this anyway and maybe that would be the wrong decision. Uh, David Aiken. Uh, I, I like the hats. I mean if you want hats this is the, this is the week for hats. We're gonna see hats. But and yeah. you look smashing in a hat. Thank you. Very Especially much, at Scott. IT. Actually um, David Aiken is well known for his hats. You I'm do, well known for my hats. Absolutely. Well I have a tremendous hat collection. Um, but no one of the things I, I like the monarchy I mean because I find it inoffensive by and large. I do like the, the as Scott was going on it's a connection to an important past. We don't have a lot of symbols in Canada. Uh, this is one of them. We're trying to grow our own. The nice thing about Canadians in the monarchy, we don't pay for the monarchy the way the Brits pay. I mean, they pay a lot of money for the monarchy. And I think we've been blessed by and large. Elizabeth hasn't been the worst monarch in terms of the way she's dealt with her people. She hasn't been the greatest now. Um, I do worry about the future of the monarchy, depending on her successors. Uh, will they be the type to find a connection but, but, with but, their but people and, and I understand keep it going? the value of history. We're, and we talked to the Minister of uh, Citizenship and Immigration, Jason Kenney, and, and Andrew Cohen, frankly, about the value of history. And, and Queen Elizabeth speaks French, is, is a wonderful symbol. But it does fundamentally raise the question of why should there be people who are born into a position as opposed to a meritocracy. We are a country of immigrants now. You know, Scott, I, I, recognizing the value of history, but 
Is that still a defensible position as a country matures and grows? Yes, it is. It's not an all a contradiction or a multicultural uh, reality to, to, to also celebrate the fact that we had two founding nations and Aboriginal peoples, of course. So, I mean, we celebrate, and there is room to celebrate all of these facts of the Canadian uh, uh, tapestry. And I don't, I don't really have a lot of time for people to make the argument that we should just throw it over because it's, it's old. Well, that's not, an, that's not a compelling enough well, argument. I, 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 let's, I, want to pick up, I want to pick up Bruce's challenge, though, and I'd love to hear the other guys on this. I do think we need to revitalize the institution, excite it, and make it salient for today. And here's what I think should happen. Uh -oh. When the Queen passes, I think rather than go to Charles, we should move to William. And I think that actually would create a little bit of energy and excitement. I think that Kate Middleton's got star written all over, and I think, uh, I think that's what should happen. He should, uh, he should he abdicate. Let Cameron. William take the reins. Okay, well that... <laughs> Can William win? Well, I, I mean, speculating on, on what's next like that, boy, you don't want to speculate on the end of the monarchy, but that, I don't know if monarchists, what the protocol on that is, but what, what do you... I mean, I think William does excite people. He's, he's got that rock star side, but, but am I asking an unfair question about the value of meritocracy versus uh, birthright? I don't think so. I, I think that, you know, really what you're putting your finger on is the question of what's the logic behind the idea of a monarchy and, and if we're a logical people does it really make sense for us if we think about it and historically people haven't thought about it very much from a logical standpoint so they sort of said well we'll go along with it it's always been there she's not really ours to decide about really and so I think people are comfortable enough with it but there's a great opportunity to make them a little bit more excited about it I'm a little concerned about uh, Scott's idea only from the standpoint of uh, the polls all say that would be a better choice, but is that really because we were dealing in this culture of celebrity worship right. and he's a celebrity and Charles isn't? And uh, I mean, if you skip Charles, then you've, you've skipped tradition. I don't understand how you can defend tradition on one side mm -hmm. and then say, let's skip a guy we don't think is as popular for whatever reason and go to his, his son. I mean, Scott, you've got you to decide. Well, la last I, word I to you, David. Uh, I don't have to accept that. Abdication is part of, uh, abdication is part of the tradition, and if he wants to abdicate, he's... Oh, that's true. Uh, abdication. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if Prince Charles has waited this long only to abdicate. That would be. That would be. Everything that happens once isn't a tradition. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to your point on meritocracy, is there anything? Uh, there the have been other abdications. Is there anything the Queen prevents Canadians, Canadians from doing? No. I mean, she's she's not gone any functional purpose in the way we govern ourselves. We elect our Prime Minister. He appoints our Governor but General. But if symbols the people... matter, they they matter, right? Sure. They, you either argue that they matter and they represent something that we hold dearly, or if yep. they don't matter, why keep them? In but this presumably. Case, they the, matter. the crown is all the political factions in our country all can say right. we have allegiance to this idea, this symbol, who really doesn't do anything, doesn't get in the way. And I think that's to a degree a unifying force among our political uh, 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 way it works. I got to abdicate this discussion for just a minute. We will come back to it to Scott Reed, Bruce Anderson, and David Aiken. We'll talk a bit about the GG and, and a possible selection.